Uh, so today I would like to talk a bit about concepts that are very basic for lighting. Uh, some of you guys know this already, uh, but it might be interesting for, for other people. Uh, there are four different concepts uh, regarding throws and beams that I think it's, it would be interesting to explain. Uh, basically, there are four different concepts here. Uh, full width, half, maximum, that's one concept. Another one is the beam angle, another one is the field angle, and another one is the V-wing angle. What the full width half maximum is, this is a measurement that is more related to uh, how we measure the LEDs, how we evaluate the LEDs, and it's also related to the spectrometers, how you calibrate uh, the signal. Uh, so it's, it's more um, in, in not as related to lighting uh, sources as we see it from the user perspective, as luminaires, uh, as a complete package that is made to, to, to work in a specific application. But basically, when you're talking about uh, this kind of, uh, when you're talking about this concept, you will see a graphic similar to this, where you have very, uh, a very clear defined area that is the useful area to evaluate this specific LED, uh, which is basically a, a range uh, in a spectrum or uh, a range of, of wavelengths that are specifically relevant for the application. This is very, very related to something that we use every day and it's called the beam angle, which is a very similar concept. But in the case of the beam angle, we are more uh, concerned about how the fixture will react after the optics. And this is what really matters to us. When we are in a show and we want to know uh, what will be the aperture of a beam, what will be the illuminated area, uh, we need, really need to know this value. Unless we, of course, have physically the unit and uh, we have our own routines evaluating how this light works. But sometimes you don't know the fixture and you want to know more about it. You have different tools to work with that, definitely the best tool is always to have physically the fixture and, and play with it. But if you don't have that, that chance, then you have different tools. One is definitely the photometrics, and in the photometrics you, you will get information about the beam angle. Sometimes you get information as well uh, about the field angle. And these are two different concepts. In some products, the photometric files either is not available or if it's available, they will not talk about beam angle, they will not talk about field angle, they will talk about viewing angle. And there are some differences between them. Uh, we consider, we tend to consider the beam angle as the useful light. What does that mean? It means that if you have a throw, if you have a light source with a specific beam of light, Depending on of the nature of the source, uh, you will get a specific type of beam. Uh, of course, it's not the same evaluating a G7 beast, for example, that has a beam of light that is collimated at a specific distance. Uh, you can work with it at 10 meters, and depending on how farther away you collimate, then you, you will get a behavior or the other. It's not directly related to, to, the, to the square law. That, uh, that is working with most of the light sources. Uh, and and that's, that's a general principle. But in general, when you are evaluating a beam angle, uh, you have a cone of light. And in this cone of light, normally, most of the light sources have their full output or maximum output in this point. This is more or less related to what you saw before with the, the full width uh, half maximum. So, if you consider that in the center you have what we normally call a hot spot or the maximum output possible for that specific luminar, then uh, there is an area where the light is visible. But in that area that the light is visible, there's another area which is reflecting the aperture where the output is 50% or above 50%. So if your point here is 100%, the points where your output is 
50% of the reference, which is the hotspot, that is your beam angle. Uh, and normally when we talk about beam angles, we talk about uh, degrees, so it's uh, quite easy to evaluate this specific angle with a specific degree. So of course, uh, the, the less the degree, the more narrow your beam will be. Uh, normally, we tend to think that a degree of 45 it's more or less a one-to-one, -one, which means that if you are uh, in a distance of 10 meters, you, with, with a fixture that is able to give you a beam angle of 45 degree, normally you will get uh, a, a 10 meter, meter distance, an aperture of 10 meters, a width of 10 meters. So that's why we call it a one-to-one. -one. Uh, just to explain it more clear, having the fixture here and the illuminate surface, this distance here, will be the same as this distance here, more or less. So this value is something that you are, of course, uh, very familiar with. Uh, some uh, luminaires, like a movie head, uh, they are using normally beam angles uh, as the reference for your zoom range, for example. So when they tell you uh, this spot can go from 6 degree to 39 degree, uh, basically what they are telling you is normally about the beam angle. Definitely in architectural environments, the beam angle is it's really important, but for stage applications, it might be that you need something else and it's not only about the beam angle, even in architectural installations. If you're doing a facade, for example, if you're illuminating a facade and you are mixing a lot of light sources, this is a very important concept, but not the only concept that you should evaluate because you, you have this remaining output of light until it's not visible at all, and that remaining light, it's also important, it's also relevant for you. Why? Because when you have a facade where you are mixing different light sources all together, then it's important to know how the light will, uh, will slowly fade out, and how this uh, fading out light will mix in between. Some light sources will give you uh, almost no uh, aperture when you reach the 50%, which means that you will have more control over the light. How can we measure this? We'll measure this with the field angle. So in the field angle, we have, let's imagine that I'm now drawing the beam angle, okay? Then you have this field angle, which is the rest of the remaining light until you reach a 10% of the original output. Always having this, the center, as the reference for the maximum output of this specific luminaire. So why is it relevant to have this reference of beam angle? Well, it's basically because if you have a fixture that has the same field angle as the beam angle, which is technically almost impossible, but let's say that you have 50 degree related to the 45 degree. That will mean that your fixture, that your luminaire, is going to be very controllable. You, you, you will really have control over the fixture because it will be almost no, no uh, uh, stray light around or halos. That, so, so everything you will get is more or less, it's a five degree difference, but more or less all the light that you have available will be controllable. And that is, that is relevant. Of course, there will be some extra light going to the zero percent, and that will be there, and all the light sources have this remaining light. Uh, but normally we consider, the field angle considers that this remaining light is not that visible, and therefore it, sh it shouldn't be uh, considered that much. So that's basically the difference between the beam, beam angle and the field angle. And normally you can get this information from all the manufacturers. Uh, since the beam angle is, let's say, the standardized way of measuring uh, the aperture of a specific beam. Uh, this is what you will see everywhere in, with all the manufacturers and you will need to dig normally a bit more to, to get the field angle. Definitely will be available in the, in the photometric file. Um, if you're using uh, a predictive tool like uh, based on IES files for example like Dialux or, or any other um, uh, predictive tool to evaluate how your life will perform, then the field angle will, will play a role as well. 
um, and some, some uh, emulation software uh, for stage purposes can also handle these, these two concepts, uh, even when one is more for, for a reference and not just to evaluate, okay, you will have this exactly amount of luxes in this area, which is more or less the, the way the, the architecture um, lighting designers work. So, uh, beam angle, field angle, what is the viewing angle? Well, viewing angle is for these cases where you have fixtures meant to work for direct view. So you don't want to illuminate a surface with it. Uh, think about media facades, think about pixel mapping, think about uh, LED screens, even if it's video. All of them have the, the same concept. The, view, the viewing angle, basically, it's to evaluate how the users, how the viewers will look at the, at the light and when they are going to start losing the, the, the perspective or the, the possibility of, of seeing the effect. So if you have uh, different fixtures here, all these fixtures normally, if they are for direct view, let's, let's think about linear fixtures like the VPLs, uh, they will face in the audience. You will see the output directly in your eye because it will be facing the people. Uh, but of course, if, they, uh, if, if the viewers are here, then they have a direct view, but the more they move around, they will start losing uh, this viewing angle. So the viewing angle basically is telling you, if it's a 120 degree, for example, is telling you that the, in this margin, in this, let's say, from here to here, you will see uh, the light properly. You will be able to see the textures, you will be able to see the colors, the different pixels. It will, the, the, the luminaire will work as the way it was designed. That's the, the concept for the viewing angle. And sometimes you, you find uh, fixtures that are 360 degrees, for example, with a viewing angle of that. I'm thinking now in, a, in a, the LV100s, for example, the LED bulbs from, from SGM. And then uh, it means that the viewer doesn't matter where it is, uh, he, he will always see the effect of the fixture because of the way it is designed. Uh, in the case of the LB100, you have LEDs in the back and in the front, and that's why you can see it with a, with a diffused ball that is able to spread uh, the light all around. Uh, so viewing angle is a very, very important concept for all these products uh, for direct view applications. And normally, it's very, very rare that a product that specifies a viewing angle is also giving you a field angle or a beam angle. More or less, these are the differences. I hope uh, you uh, enjoy the, the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. And thanks for watching.